Welcome to episode 60 of Sharing Life Lessons. This is season 6. We are one spirit, one soul, and together we are creating a library of stories and life lessons. I am your host Hamida and I want to bring you stories because stories matter, stories inspire, stories teach, and stories heal. Listeners, this is the final episode of Season 6. Personally for me, this season was a really feel-good one. We had a wide variety of wonderful guests, a soul coach, a prison doctor, a young and lovely lady suffering from schizophrenia who started the Mental Awareness Month for us, a guest from Colombia who both spoke to us about burnout and relationships, and three back-to-back episodes with Dr. Amindaya, a thought leader, with a deep understanding of spirituality, who conducts free masterclasses on meditation techniques, and who gave us so many stories from his life with valuable life lessons that it seemed like his entire life was playing out in front of us. He encountered several universal interventions that got him to be who he is today. I truly hope that you enjoyed listening to each of these episodes of Season 6. From today's episode number 60, I have decided to start a new routine to my introductions. I will begin with a good thought. My mother's health has not been very good lately, and so in her honor, I want to start a routine that follows her advice. She still tells me to go to bed with a good thought so I can wake up with one. As she says, it is very important to start our day with a positive thought or a good intention or with gratitude. I am using this advice here and will start each episode with a positive thought. It may not be relevant to anything that we will be talking about, but the idea is to begin the episode with goodness. Today's positive thought is a message I read from an anonymous writer, which I have transcribed and pasted on my office wall, so I'm reminded of it daily. It reads, Sometimes the strength within isn't a big fiery flame for all to see. Sometimes, it's just a tiny spark that whispers ever so softly. Keep going, you got this. To think of it, this message is quite relevant to what we are going to talk about today. We are going to talk to the founder of a behavioral startup about habits, how to transform the unwanted ones, and how to adopt a new set of healthy habits. Everyone, please join me in welcoming Robin Jong. Welcome, Robin. And you've asked me to call you Mr. Jong. So welcome, Mr. Jong, to Sharing Life Lessons. We were just kidding before we started um, the recording, but welcome, Robin, to Sharing Life Lessons. I am so glad that you've joined us from the outskirts of Amsterdam, Netherlands. This is exciting. I love it when I get global guests for this global podcast. So welcome. Excellent. Thank you so much, Amida. I'm very excited to be here. And yeah, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Robin, if you can please start us off by telling us something about yourself. Yeah, of course. I'm Robin. I am Dutch, currently in the Netherlands, but I actually spend most of my adult life in the Middle East. I currently run a a behavioral science startup that focuses around helping people to establish healthy habits that actually stick. We all know that habits like healthy eating, exercise, meditation are good for us, but there are still so many people that find it hard to make them stick. So yeah, I decided to change that. That's amazing. Okay, so is there a website that you're going to give me to put in the show notes that people can reach you at if they need to? Yes, that is that family. I will send it to you after our show. (laughs) Okay, and I will have it in the show notes, listeners, for those who want to change your habits and not only change the habits that you don't want, but have the habits that you do want stay with you. I recently started doing yoga and hopefully this will resonate with you, Robin. I love (laughs) yoga, but I never could do it on a regular basis. Then I came upon this 40-day weight loss yoga challenge, which I took on. And just because I did it for 40 straight days, now I cannot see myself not doing yoga every day. 
So maybe that's a precursor to what you're about to tell us. But do tell us your story. I'm looking forward to listening to your story. I I was born and raised in the lovely Netherlands until the age of 16, where the whole family actually moved to Dubai. So I went from an all Dutch to an all English school. All of a sudden I had to transition into a whole new country, make new friends, as well as excel academically because of the ambitious person that I am. Mm -hmm. So that was a huge transition for me. And it really required a lot of mental strength, I suppose, and building that resilience. Like I never imagined I would be in such a situation where I just get picked up and dropped in a completely different environment where I had to just adapt in the moment. So I was there for two years. I got super ambitious and, and really wanted to excel there. And that I took with me when I started university in the Netherlands, where I tried to combine uh, my full-time studies with work at Microsoft for mm. 25 hours a week. Okay. And I played sports for the national team all at the same time. <laughs> and what sport is that? I, I played rugby. Interesting. Well, you're talking to someone from the US and rugby does not exist in the US, but because I was born and brought up in India, I know exactly what rugby is. Oh, amazing. Um, I was trying to, to juggle all of these different responsibilities and actually next to that also have the social life that you, you want to have at that age as well. I think I was 18, 19. And honestly, it, it was all just too much for me. And I actually got very sick. I got these uh, severe migraine attacks mm -hmm. uh, to the extent to which parts of my body would actually go numb. And, and I, I couldn't leave the house for weeks at a time. And then it pretty much resulted in the realization that I was asking so much from my body and my mind, but I wasn't really taking care of myself first. Okay. Once you realized that you were not taking care of yourself, what did you do after that for yourself? Yeah, it was all about taking small steps to actually relieve some of the pressure that I put on myself in terms of my responsibilities, playing sports, my academic responsibilities, my uh, work responsibilities. Essentially, I just cut my responsibilities down. But next to that, I was very passionate and still am very passionate about finding systematic ways in which I could further improve my life. Mm -hmm. And to me, actually, habits were and actually still are an amazing solution to that. Okay, so before we go any further, let's <laughs> start with Habits 101. Robin, what is a habit and how, not even how, why does a habit get formed? Yeah, so a habit is, in essence, just repeated behavior over time. If you think about your days, what are some of the commonalities that you see in your everyday life? Is it certain snacks that you eat on the couch? Is it your daily yoga, as you mentioned, Amida? Or are there perhaps other actions that, that keep repeating. What basically happens in, in our brain, in our bodies, is that every time we do something in our lives, it takes us mental energy to actually be doing that behavior, that action. And our brains, to save energy, are constantly looking for shortcuts. Habits are basically the shortcuts that our brain creates to save energy on these repeated behaviors over time. Hmm, interesting. I didn't think about habits as being shortcuts that our brains create. That's a very different way of looking at it. Yeah, So it's, a, it's an interesting one. And habits stick, whether they're good habits or bad habits. I mean, mainly bad habits. Why do they stick? Yeah, so when behavior gets repeated, specifically after 66 days, research shows it's imprinted in our brains to the extent to which this shortcut has become so vivid, so clear that it's very hard. It's, it's, it's actually becoming harder not to do it than to do it. So the example, again, of your yoga, where 
you did this challenge for so many days that it became such a strong habit stored in your brain Mm -hmm. that that consequently makes it easier. Uh, It makes it your default, essentially. So you default to doing yoga rather than perhaps the other behavior that you had before that. Okay, I like that. So let's move on to the more valuable part of this interview. Tell us the life lessons. Tell us how you have people change habits. So if someone determines that they have a habit that they really want to get rid of, A, B, they want this other habit that they want to replace it with. Tell us how we can do that or if there are any any other life lessons you want to share with us. I actually see it as a three-step process. You speak a lot about like when people recognize that uh, certain habits are bad, but what often happens is that we are not always aware of the habits that we have in place that are actually impacting us negatively. So the first step is gaining awareness, getting clarity on our current situation. And an actionable step that, that people can do to find that out is just to write down what an average day to you looks like. So from the moment you wake up all the way until uh, the moment you go to bed, try to write down all of the different actions that are recurring, that repeat on a daily basis. What we can then do is then think about those actions and then next to it, write down whether this behavior is actually supportive of the person that you would like to become unsupportive or perhaps neutral. So you're asking us to make a whole spread, like not a whole spreadsheet. I don't want to scare people away. (laughs) This is not an Excel spreadsheet, guys or gals. This is just something in a journal, right? You're saying make a journal, put down your actions. And then if the action is supportive or unsupportive or neutral, is is that okay? Okay. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, so try and think for a second, like, what is the future me that I want to be? What is the future me that I want to work towards? And then assess whether those individual actions are contributing towards you becoming that person, moving you further away from that person, or perhaps other actions like turning your alarm off are neutral. It doesn't really change the person that you become in the future. Get it. Okay. Excellent. Once we have an understanding of what our current situation is like, we can have a look into uh, the habits that we would like to change. There is an interesting model by James Clear, who is also the author of uh, Atomic Habits. The model is called uh, the habit loop. And it's basically four stages where there is a cue from a certain habit. So let's say every time I uh, sit on the couch, So then sitting on a couch can trigger a certain craving. So every time I sit on a couch, I get hungry for those delicious cookies. That craving that can uh, create a response, me running to the cupboard to get these amazing cookies. And then finally, uh, sorry, the the cue, the craving, the response, and then the uh, reward. Mm. So eating that cookie gives me that nice feeling of "Mm, like I have something sweet in my mouth that happens. So in changing any unsupportive behavior, what we can do is the cue and the craving remain the same. However, the way that we respond to that is something that we can change. Mm. So in this case, we have the cue, we're sitting on the couch, we get a craving, oh, I'm hungry for something then instead of going for the the cookie with perhaps loads of sugar or other things that are are necessarily positive, we can go for an option that that does support our goals, like salted popcorn, for example, or perhaps a piece of fruit. Then these foods still give us that feeling of being full, that, that fulfillment that we get after eating. So we still complete the full habit loop. So by simply changing the way that we respond to the craving Mm -hmm. that gets created, we can relatively simply move a a negative habit loop out of the way. That is so interesting. I mean, if you look at it, Robin, it's not a massive 
change that you're doing. It's that it's a yes. very slight, small change you're asking us to make. Instead of going into the pantry and grabbing a cookie, just go stretch your hand and get that apple. That's all you're asking us to do. Yes. <laughs> which makes so much sense. Thank you for sharing that with us. Can we take another tangible example and talk about that as well? So you know, people really get what you're trying to say. So I'm going to be selfish here. My teenage son, yes. he does not sleep till 2am. And then it is really difficult for him to wake up in the morning in time for school. Yes. And he's realized that. And he keeps saying, I want to change my sleep schedule. I want to change my sleep habits. Any yeah. tips there? Yes. So, well, it's, it, first you have to mention that it is different person to person. Yeah. Um, when, again, looking to the habit loop model that I just discussed, I think, for example, when your son wants to sleep, let's say, at 11 p.m., but then his phone could, for example, be the cue to actually trigger craving for social media or likes or whatever. In this case, for example, let's say he is in his bedroom and just walking into uh, the bedroom at night. That is a cue that, that triggers a craving for wanting to be in control. So let's say his whole day has passed by relatively quickly and he wants to have something that feels like he's in control of his life rather than life being in control of him. Mm -hmm. Then social media usage and being on your phone and stuff like that is actually something that has been examined by a psychologist also that we do to end the day in a strong way where we feel we are in control of what we consume, what we don't consume, when in essence, it's our phone that is controlling us. So we have the, the cue of going into our bedroom, the craving of feeling in control, the initial response of having our phone, and then the final reward of getting those likes, all of that dopamine that gets created in our body. Uh -huh. So alternatively, what we can do is create some sort of evening routine where we are actually taking control of the way that we act, the way that we behave right before we go to sleep. So we still have that same cue going into the bedroom. We still have that same craving of wanting to be in control, but then our response to it could be, let's say, reading for half an hour. It could be some light stretching. It could be drawing, if that's what you like. It could be journaling. It could be any of those amazingly supportive habits that actually allow us to get to sleep much earlier while still feeling, getting that reward, feeling satisfied from those actions that we did in the response stage of our habit loop. And you're saying how many days does he need to do that to be able to transform the habit? The initial stage and the most important stage is 21 days. This is the, the stage where most people actually don't make it because it takes a lot of perseverance and actually more than that clarity on what is it exactly that I want to achieve and how is it going to look like so that you can proactively get any hurdles out of the way and actually start excelling at, mm -hmm. at what you do. Then the longer period for habits to become ingrained into your brain and, and your body, that is 66 days. Absolutely yeah. like that, Robin. I thought you were going to tell us something that is undoable and you'd have to build a lot of courage to even make that change. But I think what you're telling us to do is not that difficult. It's actually quite the opposite. I think a lot of people see habit changes as very intimidating and yep. they have to be big like the 5am club or like those extremes well actually our research has pointed out that it's the small steps that actually have the biggest impact in the long run interesting and what happens if people can't get to that first 21 days do they reset the clock and start from day one how does that work Excellent question. Of course, any learnings that you have in those 21 days, you will not lose. 
but I think it really depends on the mindset. So actually one of the aspects that I speak about a lot in our Happy Habits program is failing successfully and actually learning to adopt a growth mindset. So seeing failure as an essential building block that you need on your way to success. So that every time you take a misstep or you did an experiment that didn't quite work out the way you wanted it to, it can be a very valuable lesson that will actually allow you to excel even more in the future. That is great. Failing successfully. I think that's going to be the title to this episode. (laughs) Nice. I love that. Robin, anything else, any last message that you want to give to the listeners, anything that I haven't asked you about, anything is going to be valuable to the listeners, please share with us. Well, we spoke a bit about awareness of your your habits, your beginning point. We spoke a bit about these habit loops in terms of your bad habits and how you can change them over to good ones. In addition to that, there are actually a lot of opportunities in your days that allow you to not only transform the bad habits to good ones, but to also create great ones from scratch. Mm. So we look into opportunities where we normally don't really do too much or opportunities like connecting with your family or having dinner with each other or whatever, where you can go from eating alone to actually turning it into valuable time to connect with each other or do other things. So for this, again, look at that exercise that you did in that first step of awareness. Look at the things that you feel are the most supportive in your days and try to see where you can create time to create more of that in your days. Like that. So it's not only about getting rid of bad habits, or transforming bad habits into good habits, but also creating these set of good habits that will only bring value to your life. Yeah, for sure. Like that. Thank you so much, Robin. It was so great talking to you and getting all these valuable habit lessons from you. Hopefully the listeners are going to be able to use them. Amazing. I am very much looking forward to that. I hope it was valuable for the listeners as well as for you. And if anyone needs any additional support, always remember that I am just one message away. Very happy to help. Thank you so much for having me. Robin, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. Hope to see you sometimes in person soon. That would be amazing. Thank you. Listeners, I found this discussion very informative and I hope you did as well. What we learned from Robin are tools regarding transforming unwanted habits and adopting healthy habits that we can start using immediately. As always, here are my key takeaways from this discussion. 1. Habits are shortcuts that our brain creates to save energy on the repeated behaviors over time. 2. To become aware of the habits we possess, Robin asks us to go through a journaling exercise about noting our repetitive actions over a few days so that we can determine which of the habits we possess are supportive, not supportive, and neutral related to the person we want to be. Once we determine the habits we want to change, then 3. Based on the book Atomic Habits, authored by James Clear, Robin spoke in detail about the habit loop that consists of cue, craving, reaction, and reward, and discussed with examples how we can use this habit loop to transform unwanted habits to healthy habits and also create a set of new habits that will add value to our lives. And lastly, failing successfully. Seeing failure as a necessary building block that you need for success. This is such a powerful idea, not only in the matter of habits, but in all matters of life. I am digressing slightly here, but I ask all of us who are parents, can we include this in our parenting routine and allow our children to fail successfully? To fail, learn lessons from the failure and apply those lessons to the next endeavor leading to success. 
This will give them such a sense of freedom where no failure will bring them down. But in fact, they will start expecting and accepting failure like they do successes. Listeners, I hope you start and continue to work on the habit loop. This brings us to the end of season six. I will bring you the first episode of season number seven, episode number 61, in three weeks on Wednesday, June 30th. Until then, I hope those who need to catch up with all the interesting episodes of season six and prior will do so. I now sign off for season six and I wish everyone health and happiness. Be happy, be safe, and be well.